I'm also going to redo a lot of your cla uh, um, abilities, specifically your Sphinx Bloodline abilities, because yep, yep. I'm not happy with where they are right now, and I'd like them to be a bit more useful. Mm -hmm. and you're playing your character differently than I had, had thought you might do it, so I'm going to adjust to fit your character better. Well, also, some of them I'm like, can I use this in this situation? Like, would it be useful, or would it be, or would it be a fucking... Uh disadvantageous because because of other micro factors yeah, I, I, exactly after the today's session i'm going to look into it more um and i believe with that everybody's stuff is settled all right oh. goodness my goodness okay uh, uh, is everybody here let's get a head count uh-huh hello hello living uh, I didn't hear way or hockey. No one. Living the dream. All right. Prepare to start your stream. Get some. Let's just go for tavern. Who'd you write this to? Did you write this to me or to everyone? Hmm? In the uh, game chat. Okay. By the way, you guys should go see the car that we saw today at Walmart. I put it under funny stuff. Nice. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I did see that. Thoughts and prayers. Mm-hmm. Thoughts as in T.O. And also, Haki, I wish to <laughs> apologize for my vulgar language. No, I don't care. Fucking twist. You're just in a heated moment. Heated gamer moment. <laughs> Your brother's a fucking idiot. Your brother's a fucking idiot. That's on him, not you. Mm-hmm. But I still would like to apologize, so, so that your chat is also aware. Okay. I know I appreciate it. I've been not shaved for a week because I'm trying to see if a beard will actually grow. Aww. Oh, little baby face trying to grow a beard. Oh, let me see. It's not terrible so far. I literally just haven't shaved in a week, so if I cover that, like, it's not great, but we're going to see. I feel like it's not quite this yet. Covered. No, but Where's the other thing is, like, hair? I don't grow much hair, and I don't grow as much here, but it's, everywhere else, sure. it's very much full enough, so. Yeah, we'll mine, the only spots that doesn't really grow is right here. Like right well, if you look, if I look up, you'll see I've got, like, a Y that just doesn't grow as much hair. It's very weird. Uh. Well, the... Ghost can grow a spectacular beard rather quickly. He's not got a nice full beard on his face he gets. <laughs> yeah, tell that to the Air Force. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. he can, though. They Granted... just won't let him. We know the second that ghost gets out, he's... <laughs> he's not allowed to be fucking... To have a wizard's beard, okay? Let him look nope. like a mountain man for a year. Let him be free. He can he can be free, but, like, it's gotta be, like, not nasty. Of course. Listen, you I know could... I mean, you grow it out till she fucking says something. I could... <laughs> I could technically... Go and change... What religion I follow? Yes, uh, be one of those you're, you're gonna roll up and be like, "Hey, boys!" No, be like my cousin. Assalamu alaikum, motherfuckers! Air Force, like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jedi is their religion. Oh, you know what's God. funny about that? I know I someone that did that. Norsemen. They got a guy to do their to be their priest. It was like, <laughs> like they were known for being shaved and clean. Yeah. Which well, is it's funny how, oh, if you're like the Norse religion or whatever, you can grow a beard. Like, that's literally not what they really did. Yep. Some of them had beards, some of them didn't. Yeah, it has and also, it all depends your religion, on your genetics. Too. Only, okay, well, the thing is that the, the original argument for that was, like, to have long hair braided because in, you know, in Norse culture, males would have long braids, and when they would get a wife, they would cut them in mm -hmm. some culture, in some areas, right? So I think that's what it stemmed from. And, like, and then some guys just wanted to rock a fucking beard and say, and fuck like, you. Beard. And it's like, you know what? Go ahead. Power and also, a beard to face <laughs> also makes it harder for you to actually, like, keep a bruise in a way. Yeah, it, it, there's there's debate on those measurements, but it's yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a theory. It's a well-liked theory. Well, with the masks that you guys use for <laughs> chemical warfare, it doesn't fucking matter if you're clean shaven or not. If, like... There, there's can't... probably a threshold where you have straight up too much beard to fit in it, but well, that's the a big thing, threshold. It wouldn't let you get here, to there. Here's it's the still going to steal to the skin. Really here's let, the like... fun thing about that. 
the rule it, I'm sorry I'm sorry I cut you off on that the the rule is if it is required at the time for you to shave no matter what you have to shave so so just keep a razor in your fucking kit and you're good I don't mm -hmm. think everyone has to do that just for normal maintenance. Like, I haven't shaved my neck. I need to do that. It is technically part of our required, like, things for our, well, at least in my case, sea bag is, like, razor and all that shit. So, yes. Well, yeah. You're correct. But that, that come from, that's from the old Navy days. Anyway, are, are we uh, are we ready to get started? We're an hour yes. past start. It's uh, taken us some time, but we are all here. So, Kristen, are we already live? Well, yeah. Probably, uh, because yeah. I just, Hello. I just was like, "Fuck it, I'm not." Enough. Good news, everyone. <laughs> Good news, everyone. Beards. <laughs> and welcome back for whomever is watching, and for all of you, of course. Last time we left off, our heroes at this point had returned from uh, had returned from their deep sea diving expedition with Captain Splitter Diggs with unsettling news. Despite all the trouble they had gone through, they had been unable to recover all. all or I had, sorry, my words are failing me. Able unable to, to unable recover, to recover all, all the gold, treasure. All of the gold bullion that had been lost with the wreck that they had dived upon. Instead, it seemed they had arrived too late, and then an unknown individual had beaten them there, leaving with half of the gold pulled upon the back of some large aquatic monster of unknown nature. Having thankfully made believe their promise... A, believe him to be a Moses for. Potentially. Having thankfully made their promise cut, at least due to the discovery of additional riches in the layer of the sea hag, they had endured a prolonged inter uh, sorry, there was supposed to be a comment uh, there. They endured a prolonged interrogation at the docks before being intercepted on their way to buy new armor for Sir to buy new armor by Sira. I should have added commas. I'm losing my fucking place. Who escorted them to Master Asonum for a debrief? It was during this meeting that disturbing news was uncovered. Back in the homeland of Balgoris and Torin and Turbius, slightly. The ancient bronze dragon, uh, fuck, Kakrixian. Damn, spit it out. Kakrixian, <laughs> Kakrixian the Just, ruler of the city of Sinterscale, had died and had been replaced not by one of his children and more legitimate heirs, but instead by an, instead by a high-ranking member of the court, a green nav dragon named Ashgaraka. Ash, Ashgarkath, Ashgarkath. That's one. Sorry, um, I shouldn't have smoked earlier. Who had served as a royal advisor for decades and was himself head, head of a prominent noble family. Zilla Sonum suspects foul, fl foul play as age never takes a dragon by surprise and his source and his source in the upper echelons of center scale society had gone missing immediately after reporting on this news. His last message. Hang on. His last message being that a single elven woman with fair skin and very and blonde hair dressed in all black had arrived at court. But a second matter had to be discussed before any further actions could be taken, as Zill described the full nature of their intended expedition to the north, and the revelation that a party member was, for one reason or another, in possession of the key needed to open the rooms in question. As the meeting concluded, the party was brought back to the docks, where they set their eyes on the vessel that had been placed at their disposal, the Silent Zephyr, a state-of-the-art and highly customized vessel owned by Zill and under the command of Cyril Smith. After a brief tour and introductions with some of the critical members of the crew, Zill departed, bidding the party to enjoy tomorrow's festivities on Founder's Day. A, uh, the only major civic holiday in Gurdan not tied to a religious group. And thus, we find our party aboard the Silent and Zephyr in the late afternoon before the holiday. It is still, it's about 4 p.m. based on the clock I have running. Oh, 20 minutes, everybody smoke. Wait, what? I want to <laughs> smoke. Yeah. You guys are making me jealous. I mean, I've been hitting a dab pen and bongering the whole po yeah, the whole time, so. Fucking lucky. Wait, I'm pretty sure my character doesn't have a pipe. <laughs> no, I forgot I forgot to buy a pipe. I, I got some go hot. The Colorados are over to Michigan that my mom's to do that now. No pipe, on... no smoke weed. Yep. Rough. Because I fucking base. So that I didn't cover in the uh, debrief there is that you also be leaving the day after the festival, it is. heading. North. So how dare you make your stoner wife live on base coast? No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> At this time of day, the city is beginning to wake up. I'm paused. Is beginning to wake up, 
things are everything is open if there's any business you have to attend to if there's any equipment you wish to go purchase tomorrow will be a lot harder to do so as the city more or less shuts down for this holiday now Ciro stays behind to work on the boat a little bit but is there anything that people need on this ship or shall we go back to the city I, I believe I need oh my, my apologies I am good to go to the city if you are I'd like to purchase better armor City yes, trip. I need to buy more ammo. <laughs> okay. Well, if everybody's ready. Tell me where you would like to go. Uh, I'm heading to the Honorous. If anyone would like to come with me. Yes, I shall join you. Absolutely, I'm picking up some. Perhaps I oh, Can't really afford point. much with our current income, but Splint Mail would be a decent upgrade. Oh, don't you worry about that, my friend. I'm excellent at negotiations. You have 422 gold. Oh. I've only got 300. <laughs> so look at that number again. The what the two platinum. Oh, there it is. No, oh, yeah, the two platinum. Um, I, I should convert it down, but I ain't worried about it yet. Uh, I need to open a banking account. Maybe invest in some stocks. <laughs> well, there is a lot of... I hear there's, there's this there's new no thing called... Um, what is it? Um, I believe it is something the youth have been speaking of. It's called a cryptocurrency. Yeah. <laughs> No. Uh, yeah, invest in NFTs, everyone. Ah, yes, Ooh, I've heard of these NFTs. photos that are worth money. <laughs> non I think they're called paintings. How much? How much is one platinum worth? Ten, Ten gold. <laughs> one painting. So, I have four. I have forty-four platinum, one gold piece, and three copper. Holy <laughs> shit! How do you have forty? So uh, because I, 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 I converted all my currency. Yeah, yeah, there is a button there that allows. Oh, you okay, so there's a if you go to your if you go to your character sheet your money, and then you go to your inventory and then you'll see like your money money bar yeah. across the top. Mm. You see that yeah. stack of coins, manage currency. So this way we can transfer to like a bucket or a backpack or whatever. And then if you go to convert, you hit convert all currency. It'll take everything up to the highest denomination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Noted. Yeah. Huh. I think if I'm going to do something like that, I'll actually go to a bank as well. I personally find, would wish it would turn everything into gold because gold is the easy is the, like the default. Yeah, gold yeah. I gold. wish it just went to gold because I would yeah. not. The gold standard. The gold should be the <laughs> like, highest it has. Well, platinum is just ten gold, so I mean it's not yeah. that bad. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's simpler for me personally. I don't. I don't. Know anyway, so everybody is heading over to the. Uh, was the All Hammers Armory to go and shop? Uh, yeah. Sure. Yep. Well, yeah. right. It'll buff my AC to a 19. So, yeah, I'll, I need to do it. It does not take very long for you to cross the city at this hour, though you do have to take a pretty wide berth around most of the docks. As there are, several ships recently came in, and it's quite busy as people dash about with different and, uh, bits of cargo. Carts are moving back and forth as goods are brought in and, and sent out from the city proper. Once you get over to the worksteads, it's actually a little bit less busy at the moment. Most of the big work of the day is wrapping up at this point. They're entering like the sale period. So right now there's a bunch of people milling about, but the forges and the forges are hot and active, but it's a little bit, little bit more subdued than when you came here in the early morning once before. So you head over into the main hall that is the shop portion of this structure, and you see a different individual than you met at the first time there it is a uh you see a half orc you have to see a half orc man with a very like neatly braided beard which is a little bit of gray starting to come in at the side he's a somewhat older looking gentleman with a pair of a pair of like ponzene on because he's currently sitting there looking like looks to be writing in a ledger of sorts okay hello uh. can i help you <clears throat> Uh, yes, sir. I would. Uh, me and my friends are looking to upgrade our armor. If it, you would have anything available. Of course. What is it you were looking for? Uh, I was wondering, uh, could I maybe purchase a set of uh, splint mail 
from you, sir. Uh, we have a couple sets in store. They're going to be coming out. Are you doing a trade-in? Uh, yes, uh, if you would like my uh, piece of chain mail, I would like to get it transferred over to you. you yeah, and then I would like to... Here, we'll take a look at it. We just got to see what condition it's in. It is, uh, I, I must be honest with you, sir. It has seen a little bit of wear and tear over time. It is. A, it is has, it has been used. Of course. Well, if it's not suitable to be resold, we will disassemble it and use it for parts. Understood. Open steel. I would request, though, if you could at least, um, could you transpose the seals that are currently on it? You mean the holy symbol in cloth in the front? No, the tunic, I'm not going to hand over the tunic, sir. I was more of like, oh, I thought I described it. Yeah, no, he has, uh, you know what you meant by seals. Yeah, uh, basically, it's like hammered into the armor. There's a little, uh, symbol of helm. Yeah, we can take that out very easily. Yes. Oh, uh, that'd be very gracious, sir. It is sentimental to me. All right. So he he takes he takes the armor as you said on the table and he gives it a pretty thorough examination, slowly turning it over in his hand, stretching it out. It's actually in well, compared to most traders, it's in decent shape. Okay. Uh, can't give you new value for it, but we'll call it forty mm, forty five gold of store credit. No. Um, 50. I was wondering if maybe 50 sounds a little bit fair. <laughs> right, I, 50 gold sounds fair. All right. And you're interested in a set of splint, spl uh, splint armor, you said. That is correct, sir. I, one day I will purchase a fine set of your plate mail, as we have discussed before. Of course. Um, I don't believe we've met before, but probably more than like different gentlemen, dog. Oh, my my apologies, sir. That was the actual weaponsmith. I apologize. Oh, understand. Right, so you're looking for? Let's see. Is he? He kind of goes into the back. Just give me a moment. So he heads off into kind of this big back room at the shop, and you hear just like, like it's quiet, and then there's a sound of something like clattering. Like, Fuck! Coming from the air. One moment. Are you okay in there? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you see, you see, as a shield just kind of rolls on its edge out the door and kind of does one of those things, like a coin run away before it flattering and just flat. I go and pick up the shield. Let's go set it. Yep. yep, thank you. And you see, as he You're comes welcome. out carrying, it's not, it, it, it's well folded. It's basically a disassembled set of armor. It has not yet been fully put together, and there seem to be a lot of extra parts. It's like, let's get you fitted. And so, yes, sir. The, um, Balgoris just um, basically strips down to just his uh, pantaloons. And, and the gambeson. Uh, the other yeah, and the gambeson. Okay. And and him and you see another gentleman comes at this point. This is a, this is a dwarf and occasion and they begin the process of fitting you for armor, which takes probably about half an hour to an hour. Um, if anyone else needs to buy anything additional, people have come in. They can discuss that with you. But oh, they that's a little tight. That's a little tight. Yeah. Nope. Bring it out. Bring it out. Is as they begin to adjust things, cut the straps to the appropriate length, though giving you some play back and forth. Um, and occasionally, a piece of an important piece of armor is brought back out back and then adjusted at the forge before being brought back to you. Sometimes a little bit toasty, but not burning. Uh, mm -hmm. I will purchase eleven arrows and say ten javelins. Ten javelins. Yes. The, the 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 um it's now it's now a half elven woman at the counter just goes, where where are you going to keep ten javelins? You'd be surprised. You're you're get um, you'll get to see our magic trick. I'll just say that. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, you now have. I'll, I'll add those ten. And you bought eleven arrows. You said to bring yourself back to sixty. Correct. Okay. So. How much? <laughs> How much is that going to cost? Uh, I'm, I'm calculating that right now. Does anyone else, excuse me, need anything? I'm looking for how much Splint Mail costs. Hold on. 200 base. I would, uh, 200. All right, I'll get some of that too. I would like to buy a silvered Warhammer if they have one. Uh, we don't have any in stock, but we can make one. It will be ready for pickup tomorrow morning. Before before Earth. noon, because once the facility start, you're never going to get back in here. Happily, I'd be here... Bright and early. 
Yep. I did the adjustments there, Exile, for money. Uh, okay, good. Thank you. So I'm sorry. I'm trying to do, yeah. trying to do three different things. Uh, I didn't put javelins. <laughs> Poor elven list. lady. Wait, hang on. I found it. Uh, and those are five silver. I was gonna say that according to this, it's five silver a piece. Yep. Yeah. And so then we'll delete all that, in... and I'll let you drag that over. All in all, how much? How much am I owing? Five point five gold. 5. That doesn't 5. seem right though. It's, it's, so it's five copper. So point zero five times stuff. Okay. Uh... Plus five. Yeah, it's one one gold, five copper. I was like, there's no way it's that high. Wait, no. Sorry, it's been a day. <laughs> oh. You're fine. You're fine. Said it's two and a it's half. Okay, ma'am. If two point so, five gold, Jesus Christ. It's so five. If you need uh, a moment to get a glass of water. Two, two that's gold. Totally fine. Uh, two gold. Wait, is that right? Sorry. <laughs> yes. No. It's it's two gold, five silver, five copper. I'll hand them three gold. Sure. We'll just go with keep, that. Sorry. Keep the change. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. Math was not on my agenda today. And it's just clear. <laughs> I, sm I smoked like three hours ago. I thought it'd be fine by now. But no, I'm not. Uh, I I look at her. Keep the change. And yeah, she, you, get, you get the impression. Gives her a wink. Here, and she's like looking back and forth to the books, like looking flustered. And so you need to get a weapon silvered, which I can't remember what we did that for. I think it was like 50 gold last time. And what was... um. You all, Torin, you also wanted to get another set of splint mail? Yes. Okay, and what are you, are you trading in your chain mail as well? Yes. Your chain mail oh, is in slightly better condition. They give you 55 gold credits, so it's 145 gold for the splint mail. They're going to send you to, the, uh, like, it's not a different fitting booth. It's just in the side of the store, but next to Balgoris, and the, the, a couple of other people start fitting you out in the same type of armor. Now, let me add those to your inventories real quick. Yeah, it while that's all going on, I, I just and here's the magic trick, and I just start putting the chaplains away. She's like, "Where, where are they going? Where are they? What?" <laughs> I forgot I have the shop thing. I can literally drag shit and have it auto do the price. Why the fuck am I not doing that? <laughs> uh, that's one of those days, like hell. Torin, are you gonna do? Charles, did you do the gold adjustment already? Yeah, or no? yeah, yeah. <laughs> They got a nice little tip of, like, fucking 30 gold. That's a big fucking tip, dude. Yeah, well, I already converted everything, and I'm lazy. Yeah, they, they seem to be taking extra care with you. <laughs> you, you, like, tossed a... You tossed extra, pl like, a few pieces of freaking platinum at them, and they're like, also, oh! <laughs> kid's just giving three platinum as a tip. No, they, oh, they got, like, 15 fucking platinum. You You're said it was like 145. I'm going to be broke by morning. <laughs> yeah, I'll convert some later. Now, Rox, you wanted to get a a silver warhammer. Yes, I I like to purchase a new, like a whole s weapon, a whole separate weapon from your existing weapons. Yes, exactly. Okay. okay. Um, you know what? Let me check in back. We might actually have one. We didn't want to cancel not long ago. This is okay. just a different individual. So, so many people There's working like eight, eight, No, like this workshop probably employs 60 people. It's a very big place and it's a slow day right now. So they just call okay. the people and it's busy. You have all the front facing oh. staff are here because you've got people spending a lot of money now. Yeah, all trying to upsell you too at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's got to um, make commission. What did we put that at? That's 60. So you want a war hammer, not a light hammer, correct? Correct. Okay. That's going to be 75 gold. Happily. Happily. 75 gold. Let me... And uh, on top of my armor, how much would it be to embed this uh, Amherst in my hilt of my glaive? Between the blade and the shaft. Uh, or aquamarine, sorry. Aquamarine. They look at you, they look at the tip. Are you free? <laughs> Excellent. You get, you've tossed a lot of money in their direction. They're, they're going just, they're to just, be nice to you. It. They are it. right up to the festival. I think they earned it. 
Well, they're hosting an event tomorrow, so we'll see. Uh oh. <laughs> now, uh, do any of you fine gentlemen know of any card games at this festival? Ah. Uh, well. Not as a part of the festival proper, but people will be playing cards in most of the taverns. Most people are out drinking in the streets, though. There's a lot of open. They put up. Have you not been here before? Uh, this would be our first Neither time of us have. For, the, for the party, I believe. You're in for a treat, then. It's quite a show. Um, especially the race. I do have a now. question as well. Uh, do you. Ha oh, a little bit le uh, looser around the shoulder. Thank you. Okay. Um, I was wondering, do you have a tourney by any chance? Tournament? Um, yes, no, sir. those are. No, those um, we do those bi monthly, but uh, this in this case the event is the founders race. A mounted race or foot race? Mounted race uh -oh. through the city, out into the outskirts for a couple miles, and then back through the city. Rules are loose; people mess with it a lot. Uh, I unfortunately, I'm not a mounted rider. Loose? How we have had issues in the well, cavalry with these each, similar each... races. Each team is only allowed to sponsor one rider. However, they are allowed to, once you register as part of the team, do certain things to assist them in the race. You can't outright attack people, but um, people put up barricades, they throw distractions, people throw smoke bombs at horses, that's a bit rude. Um, basically, anything you could think of that won't cause direct injury or death, especially, you can do to try and mess with the other riders. It gets a little well, chaotic. What about spells? Uh, within reason, that would be allowed. Um, like to say if I were to uh, bless the horse. Oh, he's playing I don't nice. Think, I don't think they would interfere. You'd have to ask the officials on that. I do know one year there was quite a scandal where one of the horses was actually a druid. That they banned. Not allowed to do that. <laughs> that makes sense. So, what, what if one were to... Um, we might need to talk to these officiators, because, I mean, I could... I could, I could, I could command the horse to stop. Well, the sign up for the race is actually today. Because it's the last event of the festival before just Everyone goes back to drinking. It's a big thing in the evening, right before sundown. The festival goes on most of the night. Tomorrow is known as the... It, tomorrow is known as a very slow day in the city in general. As I slip on my armor, because it was quite quickly fitted, surprisingly. Yeah. <sighs> oh, this is quite comfortable, gentlemen. I'm very appreciative. Uh, and... Amonis, uh, when we get a chance... You're a cavalry man, cavalry man, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, you should have. Do not call me yeah. sir. I have not earned the noble titles. I appreciate the respect, though. You're a paladin, nonetheless. <sighs> not anymore, my friend. But that is a story for another time. Well, actually, you know that story. That's not a story for another time. <laughs> Continuing on. <laughs> um, Senator Morris. Namora. Yes. If we could bless your horse, I I can bless up to I think with my current abilities I still have bless. I could bless both you and your horse, and it would give you an advantage in the race if you would use it. Like one minute. Mm -hmm. huh? Unfortunately, it seems my horse is still in Nergesh. Mm. It seems I left my horse in another uh, state. <laughs> I believe, Unfortunately, I, I, believe I gifted it to a, an officer under my command. Uh, he had lost his in a battle. Unfortunately, I have not advanced to the point. That I've heard, I've seen a couple of paladins who were able to summon a steed of their own. Oh, from... no, so the, the, you don't need your own horse. In fact, you're not allowed to bring your own. The stable supply horses for the race. They make sure they're all roughly the same level. It's a test of the rider's skill, not the horse's breeding. Uh... It sounds like you have a chance to... What is the prize for this uh, race around the uh, city? Well, you get two draws for grand prizes, I think, if you get it. And grand prizes, they usually give out magic items. They're... I mean, one year, some... I know someone got a uh, crown that made him like a fucking genius, and they became quite an asshole. Intelligence doesn't always equate to the proper manners. Oh, I think. 
I saw a javelin that blew someone up once. Wait, they it tested that... it on someone? That... No, that's what they described it as. Oh. I didn't see him <laughs> I was use about it. to say, I thought the city was not into those like, kind of rituals. Look, but... Looks over like, huh? I, I think they stopped giving out weapons recently, though. Like, they didn't do it last year, and... Uh, might have oh, my time. ranger friend, you'd be surprised at the amount of instruments of destruction that this world's capable of. Thankfully, Usually... they're expensive, and not many people have them, but, uh, yeah. I'm sorry this is taking so long, I'm just trying to do three things at once. <laughs> That's why we're just sitting here talking in the background yep. while you're working it's, on it. It's good, it's, good, it's good background, you're learning important information. I wish there was a Tony, because we are, most of us, uh, Sir Forrester, myself, uh, you, Sir Nemonis, even Sir B, we could all at least participate in a tourney. Even if we ended up coming against each other, we could at, at least test our martial skill. But if there was a prize, we could there work even no harder. There is no tournament at this um at this event. There are you are a cock block. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had two ideas and this is the one I went with. You couldn't give me a tourney. Uh, they, uh, the guy said they hold them every month or like every other month. They're bi monthly and besides, it seems like we're going back home soon and I'm sure the some attorneys are coming up. Okay, um, Rox, did you do your math? I'm just going to find some way to afford a plate mail. I was waiting until you moved on to me. Do you want me yes. to remove the, ma the math myself? Or? Yeah, so it's 75 gold, because I, did, I didn't put the item in for sale, so I just put I just made the item. Sure. Then I'll remove the money. I'm sure there'll be plenty of time to recover enough to make plate mail on the way. Remember what uh, honestly, I'm uh, half tempted now just to go mine for the ma the materials. Hey, Exile. Yes. Did we? Was there a reason we didn't do Deaf Explorer? Excuse me. Oh, we poked it in with. Uh, yeah, you got a lot. Natural. Of things. You got a lot of things. Yeah, yeah I, the the Deaf Explorer <laughs> or Deft. <laughs> D E F T. Uh, I didn't see that on that... your level up list. So I'll take a look at that. No, uh, it it's it replaces natural explorer. <laughs> yeah, but we, we, basically uh... combine, we basically combine depth and natural because they're both underwhelming yeah. in different ways. Yeah. What about our druid friend? Do you wish to purchase anything here, Lotus? Uh. <laughs> Sorry. She's just sitting there staring at the armors. <laughs> <laughs> She? I, no, I'm, I don't. I'm not sure if she needs anything. anything better. She doesn't seem like this is one of the clerks working there. She's wearing a good set of elven oh. chain. It looks like. Yeah. I don't know where you found okay. that, but it's old style. Good armor, though. We make a couple sets of it. It's. Uh, I don't think we have any right now, though. It's visiting smiths. We don't. Mostly dwarven forge. Understood. I believe we. Um... We were that party that cleared out the dungeon to the in that old fort. It was down in there, I believe. Uh huh. Oh, I heard about that. So that was you, you folks that went down there. Impressive. Good work. You're Thank welcome. You. I mean, you, did, you denied the yeah. city a hanging, but I don't think anyone is upset by that. That oh, man got the fate he deserved. He got a very, very just death. Oh yeah, it was over. Okay. Uh. Yes. But the the only reason I brought up the Deft Explorer was because at level six you get a bonus to uh, increase to the walking speed uh, and climbing. Sp you gain a climbing you, you speed. You get your natural explorer and feature and tell me if it's listed in there. Yeah. You should be getting a bonus to that sixth level, anyways, don't you? Regardless if you have the feat or not. Uh, no, you don't. No, walking uh, speed is a special thing. Uh huh. Because I put them. To no, but the I meant like women climb and like, or like a multi class. Unless, did I just put the default one in there? Because that would be inaccurate. And in which case yeah, it looks to... like it's the default. Oh no, I gave you the strider ability, um, which gave you the speed thing. So oh, I'll, I'll take okay. a look at it later. Yeah, that's why you already have a base movement speed of 40. <laughs> 
Yeah. You're already fast. Yeah, it, it's just you a addition. You monk, you just be like. Pew. I don't know the fight. The fighter does seem like an interesting multi-class now that I'm level six oh, for this. Whenever you see uh, that in there, that's my bone dice set that I just kind of roll around randomly. Nice. Um, <laughs> and you miss. He says, turning towards uh, Corgi Scratch. Oh, your voicemail works. Is there anything you're interested in today? Uh, what do you have in terms of like armor? Okay, what sort of armor are you looking for? Mm, some that's a. Uh... Oh, I can easily move in. Also, kind okay, of um, quiet. We're talking some more light armor, is what you'd say. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing heavy. Okay. Um, nice set of studded leather, maybe. We have some uh -huh. stock. I think we have one fitted for tabaxi already, tail hole included. Um, okay. See. Yeah, then you see us another. Person goes runs back and in it, and they come back with a set of studded leather armor that they place on the table. Um, we'll have to get you fitted for it. It's um, this one's a little more involved than the uh, metal bits, but it won't take very long. There's actual tailoring involved in this by comparison. Yeah, that's it. Um, so that would be forty-five gold if you're interested in a set of, stu set of, a set of studded leather. And that. And so I can actually just drag it into your inventory and do it this way. And that should have just taken the gold from your inventory automatically. So I think it go, did. Guys, but... Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. I say as my weapon is handed back to me as it was quickly embedded with the stone. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's it's a very simple setting. They definitely did in a hurry, but it looks very robust. There's like eight prongs coming around the stone. The stone itself is not fully cut. It's a little bit imperfect, and they kind of hollowed out part of the pommel and stuck it in, so it's actually going all the way through. And the pommel, the blade quick... to the shaft, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. No, and it gives a very... It, it has a very interesting look as you turn in the light. It's... It's very pretty. It's very pretty. Quite gorgeous. Thank you, gentlemen. So mm. that better work. Um, do you have a screening dummy? I can work out some strikes. To see how this armor um, fits a little bit. Yeah, well, we do. We have a. I would call it. We have a bit of a range that we use for trialing weapons and such. Uh, James, can you go take him over there? Uh, yeah, as you see, is a fairly young-looking human boy, like probably an apprentice. Uh, he said, "Yeah, come with me." And he leads you out over inside, and there's a area where they've got some heavy wooden backing and like lanes set up as if it's a sh like a sh compact inner-city archery range, and then across from that, you have a couple of training dummies set up. Oh. By your way, lad. Okay. I see you also took the liberty of adding banner clips. How generous. Oh, we don't want to fall out. And we uh, clean... Well, we didn't clean the banner. We did run through some water. It's very bloody. Yes. <laughs> in quite a few battles. Also, yes. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, a chance a creep here? Oh, of course we do. Those are pretty popular. That or cutlasses. Um, let's see. Rapier is going to run you. She looks through the book. That's another 25 gold. Mm. You also have a silver one, but... Uh, that didn't come through clearly. What was you that? have a silver oh, one, but... Uh, I do not have a silvered one ready, unfortunately. Okay, but... no bother then. Hang on a second. If you don't oh, have sorry, a silver... Give me a moment, and she goes into the back of or She just climbed over about the stuff back. <laughs> yeah, oddly enough, when she goes back, nothing seems to be clattering. <laughs> small, small frame. She's not going to bounce around on things. Oh, everything's probably jam-packed in there. Uh. It's probably like a our small you see, like if if you. Ethiopia, where the weapons are just like fucking stacked like cardboard with sometimes. Oh, there it goes. Now I can change it. All right. All right. So now to. All right. I'm going to make this my pack weapon. Uh, you must hold so. It's probably the map. So I'll offer. Regular yeah, no, she hasn't returned yet. I'm deciding. Okay, where she comes there we go. 
Okay. It's one of two things I'm deciding. All right. Um, is anyone watching Balgoris at the, uh... Um, well, th there's the boy who came out with you is kind of just watching you drill. Okay. All right, I, I want to see if this works. <laughs> the boy watches as Balgoris whips out the mace, mm -hmm. and he whips it up, and then there's like this blood red arc that hits behind it as it strikes the target it like glows as it swings through its strike it, it, did you set it on fire i no what was that that was cool i'm not exactly sure it this is new to me huh that was impressive there, i'll be back in like we'll see if two it's minutes nominally and he does it again Hearing the he, snap he of a metal says, whip through the air, I meander on over. I couldn't find the one I was looking for, and the one I, the other option was two thousand gold a month. Can I give it that cheap? Yes, yeah, so they don't have a silvered rapier. That they do have a, they have a rapier. And Balgoris goes through another strike. Oh. It still has the blood red effect. I got, actually, Whoa. correction. I remember the thing I was looking for. Mm. They did it again. I must say, Belgoris, it's quite interesting. No, did you go out? This there is new. Train? Yes, hearing the like I said, I don't. I probably didn't hear me, but I said uh, hearing the crack of like a metallic whip through the air. I uh, looked out in interest or meandered over. This is new. It is. The weapon almost feels magical. It appears to be. We might see if the uh, arrest and sorcerer can take a look at this. This is strange. Could be quite useful in certain situations, though, against certain uh, creatures, as you've seen. Seem to ignore the uh, standard material weapons of this world. Well, it also, it it feels bound to me in a way. It wasn't like this earlier. Hmm. After the pet of all, we should consult the sorcerer before we depart. I agree. You have a sorcerer. Well, yeah, no, that's who we're going to go talk to. Um. Thank you, lad. I appreciate the use of your training facility. Uh, uh, no problem. I'm gonna have to go get Henry. We're, we're gonna have to fix that. I apologize. Thanks for um, by, though. And he runs off. Here, lad, hold up. What? Before you go. Oh, put a straw on a haystack. I've got plenty of this. I give him ten silver pieces. For your time and effort. Thank Did you. Give yourself something nice. For the festival. Thank you. And he just kind of runs off looking at the coins. Very excited. You get the impression that's a lot of money for this kid. He, he looked to be about nine or ten years old, so. And Silver, he's going to be the best. He's going to be the, the shit amongst all of his friends. Oh, yeah. Especially because he's too be young to be given. It. He's too young to be given alcohol, so he can't spend it on anything stupid immediately. He's going to buy so much candy. Oh, yeah. And there's street <laughs> vendors all over the place when this comes. Uh, that kid's this, getting this, fat. <laughs> Um, as we walk back in, what is Cookie Scratch? Uh, she's currently being fitted for armor, and <laughs> I'm getting something ready for her because I found the thing I was looking for. Uh, I'm pretty sure she's in a sealed off area. Yeah, they. She doesn't have the underpinnings of armor, so they've also provisioned her with those. And uh, you're you're led by two women into another room. But after about twenty minutes, you come back out. Fitted in this very tight fitting and well well made set of leather armor with metal bands running down it as studs to try and protect it. And you see the woman return from the back room finally with a fairly simple looking but roughly sword sized wooden box to set down. Ah, sorry, it took a while. You don't have no idea how tall those racks are. I was looking for this, and she, you see as she reveals a fairly plain 
looking sword, but in this in the kind of dim light of this inter interior space with no windows, you see that it is glowing slightly along its entire length. Oh, this, a blessed this weapon. Is a, uh, not blessed. This is called a moon touched sword. In this case, in this oh. So um, it just it, it emits. It it works as a magic weapon, so things that are, you know, you can't hit with normal things. This does work on, and it just kind of glows in, I don't know, like a 15, 20 foot radius. It is exceptionally bright. No, it's a, it's a dim. It's a very soft. It's it's the More color like is shimmer. very reminiscent. It's, it's kind of a silvery white color. It's very reminiscent of moonlight. In fact, mm. um, this has been sitting here for a while. Uh, this would be 175 gold if you're interested. Okay. Well, let me one second. Let me ask my manager. She goes over and talks to the first, the orcish man, like the half orc who's gone back to working a ledger, and they just kind of quietly first um, comes back. Because you also got the armor, we'll we'll drop it to 150. Uh, he was yeah, also deal. he was also a grad. The three daggers that she has never fucking used. She's she's. Like, well, let me still so new because her old daggers might have gotten by a fucking monster over in a dungeon a long time ago. Okay. But so he so, puts us on level two. Down the cost you, by a few. Are you, are you asking to trade it in? Yeah, the two normal daggers that she has are two gold. Her daggers each. are. Um. They're in good shape. Uh, 146 gold. Okay. We'll give you oh. the full price for one forty six. And Deal. and there's your moon touched rapier. Uh, do yeah. Uh, I can't auto subtract. Can you just do the math by yourself, real quick? One forty six. Is there anything else anybody needs while we're here? Oh. Thank you for your service. Of course, anytime. It, feel free to come back whenever you need anything. Ammunition, fi ammunition, firearms, armor, weapons of any kind. We've had a lot. Well, I'm sure we'll be back here in the future. Look forward to seeing you. Happy hunting. And I guess we meander on over to... When's the festival starting? The festival's not until tomorrow. It's currently... Oops, I was supposed to skip an hour, not a day. I have an active clock ticking. It, so it's currently little. It's currently half past six. To put it on our time, or eighteen thirty-seven is what it specifically is. So the city itself is fairly open right now. Most of the shops are going to begin shutting down in another hour and a half or so. But all the taverns are open. You've still got. You don't have an active room at the end right now, but you can go and rent another one. I did. The same in or a different one, if you're interested. Um, quickly, Scotch, I have a question for you. Sure, what is it, big man? More of a favor. Not that big. Um, you're bigger than me. I believe everyone at our party is bigger than you. That's not saying much, but I appreciate the compliment. Lotus is a no, I was... quirky scratch, so. Mm. I was wondering if you could take a look and you watch to see unhooks his flail from his belt and tries to hand it to you. There, you else reaches our hands. Oof. It's gone. What what just as happened? Soon, as soon as soon as you let go of it, Belgoris, it just poofed. That that is not right. Where did it go? Isn't it right there? I'm like pointing at his like waistline. You know, there's, no, there's no weapon there. Oh, <laughs> I thought it would just be hanging. It's just it's it's gone. It just evaporated, like like deleted the file. It's gone. Um, did it drop somewhere? No, it just as turned as into me. smoke. For me, it all just disappeared. It's a cool magic trick, Balgoris. I did not try and do that. Oh. <laughs> hmm. 
That's a little concerning. Yes, that is my weapon. All right. Um. Also, didn't you have the flail, or was that your flail that just went poof? It was the flail that went poof. That that is strange. Um. Check uh, your bag. Make sure. Like, check your whole person and act them up. Um. You watch as he pulls his backpack off. It's not in here. Hmm. About how long does it take for it to pop back on my waist? <laughs> it doesn't. Oh, oh yeah, that's true. I have to summon it. And he doesn't understand how that works yet. <laughs> well, your, your thought process at this point is, I gave it away and it was gone. It just disappeared like magic. I have an um, idea. Fucky Scratch, give it back. Um, you see a flail by where I just saw where on my boat. What do you think? No. Uh, I love it. Not on you. I mean, I could just do. Oh, she, uh, fucking. That was a fucking magic hat. Scratch, roll an arcana check for me. All right. Well, you're not familiar with this type of magic, but you have understood the concept of a bound weapon that is effectively non-existent for anyone other than the individual it is connected to. And you know that people who have weapons as such are able to bring them back, kind of at will. Of oh, course. Mm -hmm. Hold out your hand. All and right. just think of ending your whale in your hand. Wait for me. I'll trust you on this. And he watches Balgors closes his eyes and concentrates. And when you open your eyes, you suddenly feel a heavy weight in your hand. Actually. Don't. What the hell? What the hell's just happened? The bound yeah. weapon, my friends. Yep. Bound uh, would yeah, would gar garage no? <laughs> Probably you've not. Never, you've never seen anything like this before. This <sighs> man's flail. He tried to pass it to the cat. It disappeared, and he just imagined it back. Is God, it? Why? Why are all the city, the people from different? Lands like so weird. Yeah, you thought you found kind of a quiet area off the streets right now to have this conversation. You're at the edge of the square, we'll say. Is is it a gift from the gods? I mean, this is this the not one that you can give away. As you say that, Belgoris, you ponder, you feel this tugging in your chest, like something's pulling at you internally. Just this tightness before it lets go. Seems like mm. no. Well, it's a useful tool. Indeed that it is. Let me... So, packed weapons. You, you, you all have heard of these things before. What do they do? Other weapons that only you can use, if I remember correctly. I have never dealt with such As weapons. For example, and I like try to lunge for the weapon and grab it out of his hand, and I make contact with it. And the second I get it out of his grip, poof. Well, uh, Bulgar, so you're letting him take it? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. It's he, not he, hostile to him. He, he grabs it, you just kind of let him take it, and as soon as it's not touching you anymore, poof. They're quite frustrating enemies to deal with, but uh, <laughs> I'm and glad you fucking have one. And also, no one can take it off you. Be yeah. mm -hmm. So this weapon is bound to me forever? Uh, until the spell breaks or whatever may happen. If it was a, truly a... Depends on what did it. If it's cursed, the curse breaks. 
so on so if forth. it's a burn from a god that so either you die or the god sees you unfit no? this is all right at least um, you never have to worry about being disarmed mm -hmm. that's true like everyone well, then... knows like for me, I can still, I'm still a lethal weapon on my own. As she fucking does. Yeah, you have, you have retractable claws, so you can absolutely like. The last one, I have a second. There's also a right thing going to. There's also. There's also. Well, we, uh, we, we get uh, like D four claws, right? But um, like, but like no, when I do. Not. You, you don't have That'd be lizardman. But yes, she has needles, like actual claws. That right. That's a god, it's another fucking pathfinder thing, right? Fuck. Yeah. My bad. Um, no, you're good. Um. But well, also, I mean, I have stuck a fool a couple of times, and you watch as he slaps the ground with his tail. Oh well, yes, these are quite useful, and I kind of wag mine and, and make a little, little dust trail. <laughs> And also, you got some grams. In a sensual manner. <laughs> and also, you got some grams of hearing the throat that uh, makes that allows you to do certain path attack. Those, that is true. A leftover from our ancestors. Well, it's not gone forever now, but it you didn't feel divine. Again. Something tells me it's not the divines that granted me this. There's much to think about. So but I've just, occupied enough of your time. Let's, so just, let us just proceed. To just mm -hmm. to clarify the mechanics as I am playing them, because I'm playing it slightly yeah. different. Um, you are able to place the weapon down. Yeah. You, you can put it on your person. It will stay there. Only yeah. when someone else picks it up will it actually disappear. Or if it gets too far away from you. Yeah, I kind of figured. I, I kind of figured you were putting, you are picking up what I was putting down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I like there to be a little bit of nuance to it. Mm -hmm. Well, it the weapon is wherever it needs to be right now, and then I can call it. And you watch as he sums it again. Now you should be able to roast it. And you watch as he re he re rolls up the chain, and puts it back into his hol in his uh holster. I guess it would be a loop belt loop. Yeah, belt loop. Yeah, it'd be a loop. It'd be it'd be like a hammer loop. Yeah. You take your hand away and you look at it for a second. It's still there. <sighs> maybe. Maybe it has something to do with my affliction. Yeah. I don't know. Or maybe Paul gifted it to you. Do not ever say that cursed god's name in my presence. Where the fuck would Ball have gifted it to him? Holy shit. And so, I'm a paladin of Helm. <laughs> That's what Ball I meant. Maybe Helm. Sorry. You, you went for a very yeah. fucking evil god that he is not involved with. <laughs> that is yeah, old Balgoris. <laughs> You're yeah. thinking of old Balgoris. Yeah, as well, uh, as you said that, uh, uh, or, uh, as your character said that, like he, Archie Special looks at you like, I you burned up the god of fucking bath or murder. God damn. You know, blood for the Zero blood. Is the god of murder. I don't know what ball is in 5e, but it's not good. Uh, yeah, death and murder and tyranny. Yeah. Alrighty. So you've been informed now that if you want to participate in the participate in the race, you do have to enter to do so. You have to go down to the stadium and actually enter as competitors and as a team in the event. Okay. So you have that, and then as it is, it is the evening right now, and you are free to do whatever else you wish before finding a place to stay for the night. Yeah, Hel like, Ball is literally a direct enemy of Helm, actually. Uh, like, they are specifically at odds. Ball yeah, is yeah. a direct 180 of Helm. 
to wreck one of a lot of gods. Yeah. And well, yeah, Hel he's... Helm and Ball are directly opposed. Is there anything I'm... that and uh, uh, Helm followers? Because it's like, we're, we're, I just made... want to keep the pace moving a little bit because we've reached the point in time where it's like we're two hours in technically. So. Oh yeah. Oh. Sorry. Oh. Yeah. Just try, trying to refocus. So, do you guys want to go attend this uh, race or? Well, I think if we do participate, we already know who our um, who our racer is. As he slaps a a Toran on the back. Oh, well, I don't know. We shall. I am. I can ride a horse. I am not a cavalry man. Yes, but I am not a horse racer. But you it's are a chance the only to win, my friend. Land vehicles. When I say, wouldn't the ranger be able to like ride a horse or something? Um, in theory, or your druid can talk to the horse directly, and they have good animal handling skills. That would definitely come into play. Druid or ranger. From what you've been able to gather on the snippets you were told, the race itself is not a whose horse is fastest, it's which rider is best. So there's going to be horse handling checks, making sure you keep your footing. There's going to be a lot of decision making. The route, the course itself has multiple routes in some places. You can decide which path you want to take based on your own reasoning. There's quite a bit more into it than just who can ride a horse the best. So you have to choose carefully. Are you heading that way down to the stadium, though, to register? As well. There's Lotus and Nemonis. Nemonis. God, why do I keep adding an R onto it? Yeah, so it's hilarious. We I, had a, I had a campaign who's... Uh, sorry, I had a character in another campaign of mine who's... Last name was Nemoris. Mm. So I've been desperately trying to keep it out, and you're not helping. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. Yeah, let's do something take... before before we all decide to just go to the bar and drink ourselves silly. That is at least one good thing. I can at least still get drunk. It's a lot harder, though. Actually, no, I can't get drunk. I'm resistant to poison. <laughs> you can still get drunk. It just is very difficult. Um, you literally have taken the same three times or more. No, you're not immune to poison. No. You're immune He's to resist. disease. Yeah. Yeah, you haven't gotten sick in a while, and that's kind of nice. I'm curious. Uh, since... People are allowed to interfere with the race. That's in my able to make blunted arrows or semi blunted. I'm not going to hurt the horse. I mean, you don't know, but we can go find the rules when we talk to the register. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give us a uh, basically. We're sitting behind a bow and just starts. I have an intriguing mom. idea. <laughs> I have an intriguing idea for dealing with at least one of the riders. Okay. <laughs> My third. Let's go. All right. Uh -huh. buk, 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 buk. I'm gonna go quick. You make your way across the city down the down. Uh, we'll say you took the inner the inner road. This is technically faster. Just. I forgot. You can't see me moving it. So... Yes, we can. Yeah, we can. You it's live. You can see me wiggle it down the roads. Nope, I can't see you wiggle it, but I can see when you okay. move it. Anyway, um, <laughs> when you get there, there's no line, but you do see a like a big stand kind of right off of it's out actually outside the entrance to the arena, which is currently chain shut. Um, and you can see past it onto the field themselves. There's a whole bunch of people working. Um, you get the impression they're just putting it in its best shape for the festivities tomorrow. And you don't have any weight as you go up to the counter as you see a rather tired looking man another human here with kind of reddish curly hair just kind of sorry sorry that um can i help you 
Are you registering for the race? Yes. Uh, please make a ton of Moses. <clears throat> the Monus. Um, okay, so you're the rider? Yes. Understood. Um, if you could just, as he takes out a big piece of paperwork, um, make sure, read read this through it. Um, we're gonna have to, have you competed before? No, sir. Well, you're lucky, you get the last slot. We were almost full. How In any case... Fucking honey well, jack. Anyways. Um, there is the matter of the collateral, which we'll discuss in a little bit, but also the um, actual rules of the race can be a little complicated. So, when it comes to our, uh, the rest of you as well, I'll need names as well if you're all registering as part of this team. Um, do be aware if any additional persons interfere with the race on your behalf, you will be disqualified. All of you must register as a part of the event for this to uh, be acceptable. Now, what are the limitations for interference? You may not do anything that will result in the death of a rider. You may not cause direct physical harm to a horse, um, or a rider, for that matter, meaning you Obviously. cannot attack them directly. Um, you cannot do anything that will cause harm to the city. Uh, we get magic use quite frequently. Um, no alchemist so no fire, dropping, no flames, uh, no, no lightning. No buildings, no nothing like that. Absolutely not. Well, put it this way, you would... Uh, not be in trouble with the race for doing that, you would be in trouble with the law and the owner for doing that. But, yes, and, um, other than that, um, here, she, she kind of, I'm sorry, he pulls out a piece of paper and sets it off, and you see a, a series of red lines, a primary one, and then several other side ones that separate in different areas. This is the actual course of the event. You're not allowed to do anything on the prime, and, uh, I'm gonna actually trace the uh, event on the map. Uh -huh. So, starting off, uh, draw her for your hand. What is this fucking music? Anyway, so starting off, actually, I'm going to do that on the other side. So, we're, you start just down there, and you see some wooden stockades are actually being set up. Takes Course follows the main the main road for the most part heads over this way a a up through rain and center keeps going takes a right at the bridge goes across the bridge and down the path out of tree would pass there's about a five mile off road section at that point taking you through the jungle and up and down some of the minor hills before it before it comes back the other way i'm just double checking Before it comes back the other way, takes uh, it takes a ride through Xanda Square and then down past the waterfront. Goes all the way to the far side of the Windward District. Then follows the perimeter road all the way down until you hit the stables, loops back. And then goes up the steps and into the arena itself. You make one foot final lap of the arena and the finish line is right at the foot. No interference is allowed on the main stretch of, stretch of road leading out of the event until the first turn, or on the way back from uh, towards the arena, or within the arena itself. Interference is allowed outside of those areas. That's good enough. Uh, what are the limitations on magic? Nothing destructive, nothing that will cause physical harm to the animals themselves. Um, we had a bad incident with the grease spell a few years ago, but there's a reason there's a collateral payment. Um, if you're if you and your horse survive, then you get your money back. Otherwise, the 300 gold pieces that these collateral will be used to pay for the replacement of the horse or the resurrection of you. So a simple oh. a simple binding spell is not out of the question. No, that would probably not violate any of the rules. Um, what about they blessing? Are fairly... What was that? Blessing. Um, you are allowed to use basic magic to um, work for your horse. You're not allowed to do anything directly to interfere with another team's horse. However, not before or after the events. Though after would just be being rather mean. Mm. About how long does the race take? Uh, the full event is usually about a 20-minute race. 
20 to 25. Uh, some years it goes longer. This year it looks like a fairly long course. It might be closer to half an hour, but it's a fairly, it's, it's really the, um, the section in the Windward District, which has a lot of side turns. You can basically go through any path down there and most, that's where most of the real trouble tends to happen. Um, people tend to have a little bit of a cleaner act on the main streets. When you get down to the alleyways there, people don't even respect the course, put it that way. You'll have pedestrians in your way at some point. Well, and good. then the out of town, the off-road section is a lot slower than the race portion in the city itself. So that can be a lot more problematic. Now, the animals that have been chosen for this are not the fastest horses in the world, but they're very robust. They're trained on the course themselves, so they do know the track. And they are, you know, able to continue running at a good speed throughout it. However, making sure your horse has enough stamina to finish is, of course, required. Because, well, if you get too tired at some point, that's going to be a bit rough to recover from. Understood. Are the horses chosen at random? So the stables provides them. The city stables, it's, they usually pick it from their own stock. Um, and they... They and a couple of external experts um, ensure that all the horses are roughly equivalent in skill, size, and general, you know, talent, I guess you could say. They try and make it really a challenge of the riders, not the horses. I have a couple of ideas I can give you, uh, Sir Namonis. I can, I can use my sailor money to give you a couple of bonuses for the race as well. Garash will put his name down on on the paper for the team for being part of the team, and then he'll move to the back of the group. Okay. Can is sitting or standing there contemplating? Okay. I presume everybody is signing this. There's there's a 300 gold piece collateral that must be put up by the group. You'll get that at the end as long as you um, you know, don't yeah. lose it. <laughs> Bavaris happily, well, happily agrees. Okay. Anything to help I'll, a friend. I'll pay into it. Okay. So six ways, that's 50 gold apiece. Does everybody agree? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we're playing well, actually, I didn't... Uh, Roxby, Waya, y'all good with it? I was doing a little dance. I don't think you can see it. I had thumbs up. Yeah, I think Quiet. I think based on timeline, we're gonna do the race itself as the main event of next session. Uh -huh. It's gonna be half the session, and it's gonna be good. So we'll still get okay. through all the other cities, all the other games, and we just have to. Why? Why is like slightly Fading. KO'd? Understood. As she agreed. She gives us the thumbs up as she's slightly passed out on a park bench. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's just laying there. Uh, ma'am, we do need you to sign though. It was just lots of our uh, teeth uh, and helps her yeah, over. Gonna, yeah, Garage will help her over to it so she can sign it. Did she get into the pouch Kraken? No, no. <laughs> We've had a long day. Yes. That's true. Well, it's been a fairly... The day itself is growing long at this point, but... I... Have, have we finished with this at this point like are we yeah, walking you're, away you're, from you're okay fin you're finished registering you're free to go wherever you want you're you know ready at this point to the tavern uh, unless anyone has any other plans i'm gonna how far away are the stables um probably about a 10 minute walk <laughs> uh i want to i want to go over to the stables oh but by, by the way um you might want to swing by, like, this person's calling after you now, because I forgot to say this trip. You might want to swing by the stables. They, uh, I think there's still a couple horses to choose from. You gotta go, um, here, bring them this. He gives, he gives you a kind of slip of paper with official-looking writing on it, a seal. Give that to the stables, and then they'll let you choose your horse. Oh, perfect. We, head, I guess we head over there anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. It doesn't take you very long. You can't take this outer perimeter road. The stables themselves are actually massive. Despite the fact that the city is really medium-sized in terms of the world, the stables here are 
kind of looks to be a larger city, as if there's a lot of requirement for horseback transport going in and out. Um, you see a very large area. This this little token does not show that it's on the map does not show how big the actual stables are. They're they are multiple barns that probably hold 50 to 60 animals aside going down. There are multiple large pastures and corrals set up, and there's a lot of a lot of horses out and about. There's actually a lot of general traffic, too. You see an entire parking lot covered in carts, another one of even bigger wagons and another one that's like half full of all sorts of, of things, a couple chariots even. It's a very large facility, and it takes you a couple minutes asking around before you actually are led to the right place to meet the horses that you are able to select. Is that a person who is parked in a wounded warrior spot that is not a you see it everywhere. Different time. Different time. <laughs> mm. Reserved for Tideguard veterans. As you see, you the, see it. the man running the stable is actually a fear ball. Very tall and lanky, almost cow-like individual mm. with these strange elongated limbs, limbs and this kind of soft pink, mm. like gray but like almost hints of pink in his fur also well hey um you're here to select a horse for the race yes you got all right well we've got three to choose from still uh and he kind of leads you down and you see you're brought into a larger stall with three horses currently milling about in it you see a all of them are about the same size and build they're not racing horses they're more they look they're not giraffe they're more of a in between her horse, the actual racing horses you saw only a handful of. Like these a horser? More... Yeah, like this is like a quarter horse or a little bit beefier even than that. These animals definitely look like they're used to both being ridden at a you know suitable speed, but also like they're pretty sure-footed animals. They got that kind of robustness to them. A guard horse. Yeah, sure. And you see three. There is a oh, fuck. There's a gelding named Outlaw, which is a gray, which is an all gray horse. Um, hang on, where's my list? Uh, it's like a closer uh, route. He I'll named see. the horses, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it wouldn't yes. be it. It would be uh, a good DM if you didn't. Yeah, there, is, there, is, there is a mare though that is a. What's the word for it? I, I wrote down the names. I forgot to describe the horses, so this is on the fly. Outlaws the Gray. Um, this is Fleetfire, and she is a uh, she's a little temperamental, but she's she's still a good good girl. And you see this mare that is slightly shorter than the other horses is a kind of reddish brown, definitely on the reddish side, with a white kind of mark on the face and white socks. Ox, but not a chestnut though. A very much a reddish kind of colored horse. So, uh... Yep. And There's that, an actual name there, for it. But... Yeah, I, I forgot the name of it, though. Oh, and... <sighs> go. Yeah, and that one's Audrey. And you see is there's another mare in the corner, and this one seems to be kind of standing back a little bit from... It seems to be looking at you So rather... a blood bay? A blood bay? Sure, yeah, that's the one. Um, And this horse is... This one is a paint. Hmm. Hmm. I immediately walk up to the paint. <laughs> uh, I look at it. Kind of just. How skittish is it? It doesn't seem to be. Oh, that's a useful chart. Yeah, Blood Bay, a, a mouse ghouls, just a gray of some kind. So it'd be a dapple gray specifically. Yeah. Is the is outlaw, and then this one is just a full on. It's just a paint. Um named Audrey. And the horse doesn't seem particularly skittish. It's just kind of eyeing you. It looks, if anything, based on personality, you get the impression that Fleetfire is a little a little bit more on the standoffish side, but, you know, still paying attention. The the gray outlaw is probably the calmest looking, and Audrey is definitely looking at you curiously. Like, it's the most intrigued by your appearance in your group and seems to be giving you all a not, like, concerned, but intrigued, I. So, oh, Audrey, do you like to work a girl? It says, I look at its mane. None like the horse sounds. Yeah, it, it responds very, very gently. It keeps its eyes on you, but it doesn't pull back at all. It lets you pet it. 
This one seems to be compliant enough. Uh, I'm gonna... Because we still have to sleep and all that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna cast Speak with the animals. Okay, now I gotta come up with horse voices. <laughs> you don't have... To, I... <laughs> It's just a simple question. Uh, amongst the group of you that were selected, was there any that were a little bit faster? Who who do you think is the fastest amongst Jesus the group? Jesus, not going to be important. The horses <laughs> all kind of look at each other suddenly, definitely taken aback by what they are suddenly hearing. But it, it turned back, and it's Fleet Fire that answers first. It's like. Rain is pretty quick. Rain's faster than me, but they're a joke. <laughs> okay. They are probably going to throw their rifle. They like to do that. That's why uh, she's. A, that's why she's always in the race. Okay. Interesting. And the gray, the gray outlaw comes in. I don't remember his name. There's a stallion there, though. He's quick, but <laughs> he had a glance at the ladies. There's a reason he was in a separate pen. Ah, he's one of those. Okay. I'm just trying to look out for my friend who's going to be riding in the race. See who I may need to slow down. It, it kind of just nods and eyes you. And then... It's not who needs to be slowed down. You also notice that it's Five specifically miles out of when, when, when when the gray was kind of like gesturing with its neck at why the horse it was specifically pointed at Fleet Fire. Uh. Hmm. These are established things. I wrote them down, but I forgot to describe the horses. How dumb is that? I'm looking at my list here. Mm. <laughs> you wrote down the relationships of the horse. The yes, horse. because I thought this through for two extra weeks. I had way too much time. <laughs> you knew we had two people that could talk to animals. <laughs> well, I also I wrote down because they're all different. They all have you like they're not unique, but like they all are better at different things. Girl. I ain't mad at you. I just found it great. Different things. You're such a good DM. Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, just to say, Fleet Fire's in heat, so if you could use that to your advantage or not, that's your decision. I was I was kind of understanding where it was going with that, but at the yeah, same time, I was like, what I figured it's easier to tell you. Yeah. Um, you're familiar so the with one the horses that you could tell if you walk, you do a walk around. <laughs> Yeah. The fact that a stallion <laughs> was taking extra interest in her. Mm -hmm. But they left a gelding in the room without issue. The stallions are young and dumb. So. Do you have any more you questions should... for the horses? <laughs> it's uh... not something I was going to say today. <laughs> I would honestly. That's it. We can't hear what. I don't know about the rest of you, but I like the look of Fleet Fire. She looks like she has the. She looks like she is probably one of the better horses here. Audrey is more our horse. <laughs> I, I, I look the... back over at the horses and I'm just like, amongst you three. Who do you think would last the longest in this race? Audrey speaks this time. Outlaw. I'm faster than Outlaw, but... Do you not have the stamina for this? I've never done this. Ah. Everyone's been talking about it. Outlaw was in it before. He lost. And you look at Out Outlaw's looking at her just like... But did you I, lose I because stopped. because of rider incompetence, or just you got tired? I that was, make a difference. I ended up in the harbor. Ah, so rider incompetence. No, Ooh. no, he was good. There How was a you... uh, some interference. Creature, big creature chased us, and I kind of panicked 
I That's... ran up a wharf and ended up in the harbor, and then people were good at bringing me back. They were th they were nice. That's that's fair. You're allowed to be scared. I'm not scared anymore. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, I I look at the rest of the group. But I also yeah. never go mind. ahead. Continue. No, the, the the horse kind of just like you're starting to get the impression it's a little unsure of like if it even wants to be in the race. Is kind of your your impression of outlaw the more he talks the more he talks i guess <laughs> fucking talking horses day Here, here's the fun question or here's the question for the dm fleet fire hasn't spoken has she she spoke initially she was the first one to speak but she's ah, been keeping okay. quiet so she's not she's not she's speaking following up. the conversation she hasn't been dir directly addressed and she hasn't jumped in okay Why do you have a screw gun, Goku? I think it's a bullry, but if he just put the I, her I'm flap down. I can't do it. Okay, sure. But uh, I, I'm gonna look at the group. Fleet fire might be the better choice. Nothing against outlaw, but well, outlaw or Audrey, but fleet fire might be the better choice. Um, how does Fleet Fire Fleet feel Fire about running the race? Like, I mean, I'm the youngest. Which one said that? Fleet Fire. Fleet Fire. <laughs> Do you feel confident? Me, I'm talking to her like semi-directly. I'm not I dumb enough win. to get. Mm. <laughs> Like the horse, if a horse could give you a look of excitement, it does. It it straight like says to you, "I want to win." Where did you earn the name Fleet Fire, by the way? Or did it, they it, just it, decide by the way, to the furball, which is also able to talk to me, has just been kind of standing there, just calmly like, "This is sweet." The what now? Uh, <laughs> Wait, the what now? The, the furball. furball. He can speak to animals. They have like, like the ability to understand, like animals can understand them, and he's like, they're having an actual conversation. That's neat. Oh, her name? Uh, someone tried to burn down the barn she was in. She got the door open and ran out with her tail on fire. The other horses got out too. It was good. Uh, well, she is a warrior. I kind of, I kind of look deadpan at her, like, well, that's interesting. <laughs> and what is Audrey's story? <laughs> Oh, Audrey? Oh, she's, uh, she's seven now. She's, she's a good mare. She's had two calves. She's, I think, one of the smarter horses here. She, uh... That would be foals. Calves? Huh? That would be foals. That would be foals. Yeah, foals. I don't know why I said calves. Oh, and oh. foals. She's had two foals. Oh. Um, she's always getting into trouble. She knows how to open doors. I don't think they race horses once they hide... <laughs> Do they? No, no, these are adult horses. Audrey, Audrey is seven, say, you Fire mic, is baby? three, or sorry, four, and um, I'm Alpha pretty sure is... thoroughbreds are like two. Yeah, but these, these aren't thoroughbreds. Yeah, this also they're, isn't they're the modern using, day. Yeah, they're using uh, just regular, like, work horses almost. Yeah, because if you can't send a thoroughbred on a, like, 10 mile off road race, it won't survive. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it's got a chunk of it that's just off-road, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give that to a mother. Actually, yeah. I thoroughbred yeah. Actually, a thoroughbred would survive. You just wouldn't be galloping the whole way. You'd be cantering about half of it. Oh, they're yeah. also a lot more and fucking huge. Yeah. And also, their uh, limbs and stuff are a lot more dainty. Yeah. Yep. These horses, they've got a pretty robust nature to them. They look like they can be fast, certainly. But they look so. I'm they're like, like 15 hands or 14 well, like, hands high. They're smaller. They're they're more they're more like 13. But yeah, they're they're all Still about a 13. Big horse. Hands. Yeah. Well, Fleet Fire looks to be a little closer to 12, but still like 12 and a half. She's a little bit shorter than the other two. Mm. Audrey is the biggest by a quarter hand, probably. 
Yeah, I, I would say Fleet Fire. Then he was closer to her I don't, pocket watch. I don't think Audrey would be the good choice. Looking, hang on, hang on. What do you... He was pulls out her pocket watch. Okay. Are you using it? Mm-hmm. Wait. Huh? Pocket watch. One of his things. Or one of her things. Let her do it. Okay. He was kind of perceives what boat, but it was might be be better off, better of overall. Okay, so that does not fit with the rules of the spell Her. question. It has to be a. It follows the same rules as augury currently. Mm. So you have to kind of ask it. Um, would choosing X be a good decision? Like. You have to be a little bit more uh, specific okay. like that. But you also have you have a total of four charges, so daily, so mm -hmm. And if you if you click on where it says if you if you can I don't know if you can click edit on the item, but if you can, then you can click on where it says augury in the spell list and see. I'm looking at Yeah. However, I will say the, this device does not have the time limit of Augur. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add that because that was a mechanic I intended, but I don't think I wrote down specifically. So, what is your question? Go <coughs> <coughs> and we'll... Uh... What was the name of the four-year-old? So, it's basically like you would say, what is, what is your... Uh, if you just you decide on a course of action and, and basically ask it, will this go well or poorly? No choosing. Uh, the little horse. Oh, well. The little horse, Fleet Fire? Mm -hmm. The dial turns multiple directions back and forth as the little it's a it's a very complex looking device and while it's fairly solid on the front you can see all these gears turning beneath it and this kind of purplish glow sort of emanate from within it before they all go and abruptly stop in one position that based on your experience with this seems to be wheel let's go with the other fire and QS puts the watch back in her pocket. What on... What in the name of the Divines was that? The same thing that you were shown a rubbing of earlier today as apparently the key to enter an Aluren tomb recently found in the jungles to the north that you're going to in two days' time. That is more than just a... That is more than just a key. Isn't it? It potentially is. I don't know the full fuck things up what it, what its limits and capabilities are, but it has been a good tool. It basically. Oh. Have you given them dinner? Yeah. I've I've heard of people petitioning the gods for similar things. But to have a device that is able to do it, that's strange. What do you say, hey, Thorn? Hey, puppy. Yep. Thorn? Yes? Uh, uh, Quirky Scratch asked you a question. What? I say we go with uh, using with using scatter fire. Fleet fire. Fleet, fleet fire. 
It's an off-road race. We want the tallest horse available. There's going to be obstacles in the way. Mm. Not necessarily. Don't... He... She has the Whatever. drive more than the others, based on what they were I saying. I have a hand to make it Yeah, by the way, this whole time, the only person yeah. who understood what was being said was Garish. Yeah, no, we know. Okay. Just making clear. Based on what the, I just talked with the horses about, the Fleet Fire is the one that has the drive right now. She wants this. I say we give her the chance. She's too small. We need a large horse available. It, this uh, motherfucker never rode on a pony. <laughs> uh, I am a 380 pound monster. Do you really think that small young thing is going to be able to handle me? He's not small. If you've ever rode on a pony, she's only a half have... a hand smaller than the other They're two. Crackheads. Half a hand is not making that much of difference, my friend. It is when your rider is this heavy. Also, you won't beat the armor. Wait, I am riding this horse. The 300 th pounds on a fucking horse is abuse. Who the fuck is riding a horse? The, the dragonborn. Horse? The no, dragonborn uh... who is? <laughs> the dragonborn who's the only one that's... character is knows, able, how, to ride knows a horse. how to ride a horse. Well, <laughs> that's not... Kind of horse that is not riding, hang on, uh... hang on, hang on. That is not necessarily true. Garish? Uh... Belgoris? Mm-hmm. Torin? Rocks? And Lotus There's all one workhorse available. Before. That Dude, is the highest person should be riding the horse. Wait, so all of us have multiples of us so have experience basically riding. Ev basically, everyone except for Quirky Scratch has experience riding before. Uh, the difference is Torin has been instructed specifically uh, on riding horses. He has formal training. Okay, but I still want to know what kind of horses these are that somebody that's a 300-pound dragonborn can ride them. Uh, clearly, you've never seen how much fucking tax on the back of a cowboy. How much what? Have you seen how heavy those saddles are when they're fully loaded with pots, pans, and everything? It's well over 300 pounds plus the rider. Dude. On top of his rifle, ammunition, and everything. For the record, well... you weigh 285. Yeah, I weigh 285. Exactly. I'm heavier than you? Wow. <laughs> Hold on a second. Horn's a lot of lean muscle. Ah. If you look you've at got, what those... You've got a more normal figure for an individual of your size. Uh... Yeah. Okay, I'm getting it. Like, he's he's sleeper build. I'm... He's, also, he's taller than you, but but leaner. He's His whole... Being a highborn especially, he has a somewhat more graceful form to him. A much thinner but longer tail. Um, the wings... Yeah. You know, I look more bestial you, than he you does. Look, you're a lowborn. You are a lot more robust in general. That's right. I mm. rolled 380. It didn't actually come out to that. Yeah. Let's see. So in short, a good rule of thumb is that the average horse can carry 20% of its body weight. Keep in mind, this is the tack combined with the weight of the rider. I am going to tell yeah, you right now, I don't rule care of thumb. who you put on the horse. <laughs> it will be able to carry you. Please, mm -hmm. let's move on. Yeah. Yeah. This is fancy you can still run a horse and break its fucking back. That's fucking wrong to do. Then you shouldn't fucking do it. Yeah, welcome to America. Mm. That's, how, that's the fuck mean, do you, how the fuck do you think they got entire families across the continent? Good for oh, them. This God. isn't America. <laughs> this is the Oregon guys. fucking trail. Uh, guys. <laughs> guys. We're friends. Fine. But also, stop arguing is, about the horse. That's all, also, the this horse. is fantasy land. If the PN says the horse can't handle it, the horse can't handle it. I don't yeah. know why we're spending 30 minutes on picking a fucking horse. Let's grab the paint, which is the workhorse, and go, because it's a five-mile off-road track by itself. On top of the two-mile in-city on cobblestone. You don't want a fucking racehorse or anything like that that's meant for just dirt. You need something that's good for off-road and everything. The higher the horse, the longer the leg, the better its stride up and downhill is. But also, we now know the temperament of the horses, though, dude. I'm, I'm not trying to meta it. I'm trying to actually let y'all kind of debate it in character what? between the two of you. Huh? And I have like, 
Garish does know, or yeah, Garish Ghost knows, like, hey, that one horse actually clear, wants to these win. These horses are all within three quarters of a hand of each other's height. They're all very I didn't think y'all just said that none of them were race horses. And I'm they're not. Sure any they're horse they're all workhorses. The they're all fast looking workhorses. Yeah. They're not as fast as race horses, but they are robust enough to handle the race. We have a little bit more insider knowledge than just their biology. Is what I was kind of going at. That's why I was like thinking it was going to be more Inside of a. Sorry, Nolis, you fucking you fucking interviewed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. Was, that's why we're all kind of leaning towards Fleet Fire. Well, so maybe we have to convince. Races, so. Maybe we have to convince you as a character, like, hey, because you do have a professional knowledge. Sorry to kind of step in a little bit on this, but maybe we should try and convince him as, hey. Take your professional knowledge out of it. We know a personal knowledge about the you, Garish, know a personal right, knowledge. You about guys want to play it that way? Fine, we'll fiddle it the quick way. I mean, you've got. I will say also, Quirky Scratch. You also have three more charges on that watch if you want to ask it follow-up questions. If you want more information. Oh, for fuck's sake. Delete that. Okay, I don't want to roll actually do this roll. Okay, I didn't actually do it. Okay, cool. Er. There. Roll charisma higher than that. I'm tired of arguing about it. You didn't roll a charisma roll. You just rolled a d20. Oh, all right. Here, I did it. Cause you used With advantage? advantage. Yep, I just did it. Uh, do y'all want me to try and persuade him? I'm uh, pretty decent. Two, two people, two pay, people may may try. Two people may try, or one may give assistance to the other. I'll give assistance to both of us. Listen, right. my friend, I understand you have professional knowledge, but Gerish has been speaking with the animals and his weird way of doing this. I think he might have a chance to... I, I think the Fleet Fire, she has the spirit. Alright, we'll try it your way. And, and at this point... Thank you, my friend. I appreciate your confidence. To be honest, um, Audrey could do it. Fleet Fire could do it. Kind of looks over. I think Outlaw wants a break. He didn't have a good experience in the last race. Someone summoned a. I think it was just an illusion of a freaking basilisk. He didn't but Audrey, like that. the Audrey knows the uh, the whole, the course, correct? Well, she's ridden it. Well, so all all the horses have been have walked the course. They haven't raced it. They've all been trained on it. Outlaw participated in last year's race, but came in not quite last, I guess, if you count by what point they were just brought out of it. But um, Audrey's never run it, and Fleet Fire's never run it either. Audrey last year was with her foal, so and the year before. And we don't run them in. We don't run them until they're four or five. We want to make sure they're ready. Well, outlaw, you're an old soldier. Um, do you have a carrot or something I can give him? Uh, pulls out a pouch of these kind of like looks like compressed pellet of some sort of leafy thing. Uh, I take it from him, and does he actually react to what I am? Because animals do kind of have that weird sixth sense about these things. Doesn't seem bothered, actually. Interestingly enough, doesn't really seem bothered. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. So, like, even even by that general rule of thumb, even in the Old West days, even with a basic fucking kit, you're breaking a horse's back. I don't care like about you... that. This, this is fantasy land. This is no real world. At the no, 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 no. Also, just to say, Torin, Torin doesn't have the animal handling skills, some of you. There are, there are decisions to make. I'm going to tell you right now, the Wait. most important things to have for this race 
are <sighs> dexterity, strength, animal handling, and athletics, as well as survival to a lesser extent. Uh, okay, before we make a final decision on which horse to pick, mm -hmm. we need to, who is going to be the actual rider? I vote so I vote so Nam um, It might be our best chance. I mean I could ride a horse, but I'd have access to my the few blessings I have during the race. I also might don't have animal handling. Mm. Um Lotus, are you good with animals? Yes. <laughs> Bet he's She's a plus six. Better, she's a bit better more than, a bit. than me. That's my trend. Do we want? Well, why don't you ask the the ranger to do it? You are, as you stated cl clearly before, you would be our lightest rider. We, I could still give my bonuses to you if you would choose it. Actually, I don't know if ceremony is that. <laughs> you could do ceremony. You could well, also. Well, I don't know if I can stack it. Hmm? If you have enhanced could, ability, you can I could be the rider. I don't have that. Because no. The other uh, your cleric does. Oh shit! Yeah. The other the other requirements might be more in my favor. Hey, would it be considered cheating if you used like shrink on somebody while that was riding? <laughs> yep. I. You can only have one person on the horse. No, I mean like to make them smaller and lighter. Uh, that's not gonna like affect anything in this race. Eh, it might. It wouldn't not affect it. There will be an effect on the size of the rider, but there's other the, factors at play. Yeah, the the less stamina the the horse drains could possibly play in. I mean, because like realistically, no horse can fucking do this race. <laughs> Again, fantasy there's world. A race, there's a race like that in real life, but horses die. Doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's kind of my point. <laughs> this is fancy lab. There's going to be magic imbued into these horses. So oh, yeah, no, the, temple, anyways. the temples put some wards on them. The horses themselves usually don't get hurt. It's usually the riders who uh, need to get scraped up. Because like most I, horses can only gallop for like two and a half miles. Mm. I, most of the race isn't done to gallop. There's not a lot of straightaways. It's very tight turns for most of it. Build a camp for for most of it. I, I did a lot of riding on our ways to this port. Yeah, you guys also, Except you had a much uh, further travel. You went all the way to Arcturon first, which is over a month's ride. Yeah, we, so. we did a lot of riding in my early days of travel. I know how to handle a horse as far as long distance is concerned. Why not Do be... we want to change our rider? Well, we never really decided on a rider, I didn't think. You signed on as a team. You did not. There was not an explicit thing saying who had to be the one riding the horse. Mm. What about the Corky Scratch? Aren't they tiny? Yes, but I have never ridden a horse. Plus, the... yeah. Plus, the no, horse. Not, they're not, they're not, the only one in the. Options. Yeah, I think the purple's just sitting here watching us have this debate. <laughs> he, he's probably just leaning in the door, just kind of casually waiting. Like, like you get the forty minutes out. of unnecessary really debate. Guy. Yeah, we've been here for thirty minutes just discussing horses. I don't want to bash my fucking head off the wall at this point. <laughs> Sorry, hockey. <laughs> this is fucking pointless. I'll, I'll Wait, be the right guy. Oh, no. <laughs> who's, who's the high person? That that was. Oh, so we're still your camera. It still has I, I, uh, let's uh, high, stop talking about, about that over uh, Twitch and I'm stuff. Sorry. How about I'm how sorry, about Ryan? you have this conversation over drinks at the tavern? Where the fuck are you guys sleeping tonight? Yeah, let's. I'd say we take Fleet Fire. I'll be the rider. We can. Take oh my Fleet god, Fire. it's already been decided. We're taking Fleet Fire. Yeah. Who's the rider? It, it's it's uh, Forrester. Forrester's right, gonna be the rider. We're done. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Fucking hell. Okay. Uh, what was the, what was the place that we went to for? Uh, you went to Silver Shiner before. 
if you're talking about the tavern you stayed in. Okay, let's go there. Okay. Yeah. So we're here. Might as well go back to the place that a... yeah. Easier that way. They didn't there. We know the drinks. They know the people. They know us. Yeah. As you head in, you see the same, very, the same like pure white tabaxi that you know is named Art of Moonrise, or just Art as he prefers, sitting behind the counter. Currently, just kind of looks to be reading a book, while the in itself is actually rather quiet. The dining hall is actually it's open, but like they've they've set aside a lot of things, and you can see that there are other members of the staff currently setting up decorations all throughout the building. And they seem to be having a much more, like, toned-down evening than their normal, more raucous and entertaining nights. Nice. As he looks up, Oh, I recognize... Oh, I recognize you all. Are you back for uh, another stay? Uh, don't know you one. You, uh, with them? He says, pointing at Belgoris. Yes, uh, they are also... I am also one of their companions. And yes, we would like one of your, uh... Rooms, uh, what were your re rooming arrangements here? Uh, so, let's see. Yeah, we've got one of the big rooms open. That's, uh, kind of a small central hall, and you've got three... You've got dividers between them. You've got three double beds, or we can do the... How much for the big one? The big one? Oh, the double one? Mm. Uh, let's yes. see. That's gonna come out to... 12 silver for the night. Um, will you be dining in? Yes. Drinks included. Let's see. Drinks included. Uh, with two drinks ahead, there's six. Uh, that's going to come up to five gold. All right. Make it four drinks ahead and I slap a platinum on the table. <laughs> I like you. My girl just leans back like... Are you sure? Yeah, it solves this quickly. Telling you, Actually, Thorin the Philanthropist. <laughs> I still got 23 left, alright? I'm, I'm chilling. Oh, that's 13, not 23. <laughs> no, that's 13, 23. Hold on, there we go. No, that's a backslash. Jesus. Thorin's gonna go Fuck. around changing the economic value of every NPC we encounter. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. You all sit and you are quickly presented with the menu options to the night, and it seems that alligators on the menu for the protein of choice. Mm. <laughs> Never Tasty. alligator. It is well, really, it, it's it's similar, spicy, it's similar to chicken. Yeah, it, it, I've had alligator as well. It's it's <laughs> very much so. gator is pretty good. It, it tastes like it's, it tastes like a poultry, but it's a slightly different. As long texture. as it's cooked properly. I think alligator sausage is disgusting, but like fried alligator. It is. It, it yes, is alligator yes. sausage. I 100% agree with you on that one. It's not a. So here's the, the problem. It's such a subtle. Like you get like deep fried like alligator, like um, steak balls. Those are pretty fucking good. This yeah, is those are delicious. Like jerk alligator. Ooh, oh, that'll be fun. That's, actually, uh -huh. that's not terrible. That's pretty fucking yeah. good. That actually does sound good. Like that's not really good. Shit. Yeah, jerk like, alligator, fried, yeah. print, fried plantains, and a couple other sides. Ooh. That sounds pretty good, actually. I'd even take that over right. a bed of rice with a good sauce. There's rice involved. Hey, sir. Welcome yeah. to Caribbean I'll food. That. Pretty good. Damn, now you're making me want red beans and rice. Mm. They're not beans. Uh, I miss yeah. jambalaya. Oh, I was just thinking of jambalaya. You said it right before me. <laughs> oh, dude, that sounds so good. So you know what's oh. really good, though? <laughs> mm. Fucking mm. beans and tomato sauce. You fry that shit up. You put in fucking like salsa, like a mild grade salsa that's like really good. Throw in some fucking cheese. Throw in some protein. Oh my god, you got like a fucking easy made taco mix right there. There you go. Mm. I like to with tacos. I honestly make my own spice mix because it tastes I do better. Too. Than you it's also like you make a bunch of it. You you put it in a container that's airtight. You got it for a month or two. Like you yeah. you got tacos for a while. You can pre oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you can add whatever you spice you want. I'm talking about, I'm talking about like your protein, like your bean yeah. and pro your anyway, bean and protein. Anyway, bringing it back, I think today, honestly, I don't know how much more of the session is. I think we might. Today was a prolonged day, um, for this session. Do we? What are you guys feeling on time? It's not that late. We could keep going, but the other option Long is weekend in Canada. So like, I don't really care. I'm kind of tired, and I wanted to go. Do some, I wanted to go see if we could see the meteor showers happening in the Badlands. Oh yeah, so 
Um, hmm. Which is something to note. Oh, that sucks, actually. So next weekend, I'm not here. Okay. okay. So I hate that this is like we're having these big gaps in between sessions right it's now. Fine. Where are you going? I'm going to Ohio to go see the Percy Meteor Shower with some friends from college. Oh, nice. Hmm. Because it's peaking yeah. around the 12th, so I'm going down there. Yeah, for the the tenth next yeah. weekend is the better weekend. There's three different, I think there's like three different meteor showers going on. There's like, a couple right. of overlapped, yes. Uh, but the person mm, is I like to start last big night, because it's, only a ha it's a dim half moon, so it's going to be good. It's already been paid. Right. Right. It's a shame they're not overlapping at the same time, because they could have... Especially if they're not overlapping in the same part of the sky. The, the other one is I'm, further south. I'll say this off stream once we're done. Uh, about my my current uh, schedule, what's going to look like here soon? Mm. <laughs> yeah. The problem is we're getting only up my personal information to the rest of the world. Of the year. And that's yeah. against all you streamers who are watch or you fellow watchers who are watching. But, but... Yeah, given this, given this is the state, I think we'll call it here for tonight. Just yep. as a make yeah. it easy. This is we didn't get as much done as I'd hoped, but it just means that when we come back, I can have because I had plans right, for this my race. Stream's off. I've decided okay. I'm going to make this race even more crazy now because this is our main event. But we'll have time for yeah, that. and you're going to have two weeks to plan it. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I mean, well, I've, and I've already well, had two weeks like this. planning for it. So, exactly. one thing we did get a lot of is we got a lot of the role play out of the way exactly. for like exactly. that initial part, and then it's just the next next session is just us enjoying the festival and doing random shit. Just remember to allocate time for the race itself Absolutely. or we can do try and knock out the race first that way we can get that no, big race, action the segment race, the race is the last event but well, I, mean, I, I understand that but i was like we could do like more of the role playing like not to kind of yeah dictate absolutely. you and how but like if we could knock out the race first that way we would have the rest of the session just for us to fuck around at the fair the festival i mean i'll put i'll put you guys on a pretty tight leash for time but i know we can make it work okay i'll, I'll, I'll think it through <laughs> um i will say though in terms of events I'm so tell you why don't we time. just have an hour and a half for the festival? Because that should give plenty of time, unless mm -hmm. we need more. And yep. then that goes an hour and a half for the race. The two for the race, yeah, I'll probably be yeah. even long. But yeah, we'll make it work. Because you said you'd wanted about half a session for that. Our sessions go for about three hours. Yeah. So that's yeah. Exactly three to four. Yeah. We could probably push that one. I mean, if we'll talk about, it, we might push that session up an hour in terms of normal time. If that works for everyone, we'll see how it goes. So we have time for it. But, okay. But yeah. now for everybody being here, I will all uh, let you know. Uh... Okay, well, I have for everything to come to an end. Okay, Mr. Stream. And this voice. But anywho, have a good rest of your weekend. This is Tristan Longshot, signing off.